I'd like everybody to listen to how John Chancellor of NBC News reported the events of that day and evening. Good evening. The country tonight is in the midst of what may be the most serious constitutional crisis in its history. The president has fired the special Watergate prosecutor, Archibald Cox. Because of the president's action, the attorney general has resigned. Elliot Richardson has quit, saying he cannot carry out Mr. Nixon's instructions. Richardson's deputy, William Ruckelshaus, has been fired. Ruckelshaus refused in a moment of constitutional drama to obey a presidential order to fire the special Watergate prosecutor. And half an hour after the special Watergate prosecutor had been fired, agents of the FBI, acting at the direction of the White House, sealed off the offices of the special prosecutor, the offices of the attorney general, and the offices of the deputy attorney general. Six FBI agents present, impeding our operations right now. All of this adds up to a totally unprecedented situation, a grave and profound crisis in which the president has set himself against his own attorney general and the Department of Justice. Nothing like this has ever happened before. Richard, walk us through that moment. I mean, this is an extraordinary moment in the history of the country. Uh, nothing like this has ever been seen before. Uh, we're in the middle of a very, very fraud investigation. Suddenly, the leader of this investigation, the special prosecutor, Archibald Cox, has been fired. What's going on in the office at that point? What's the mood? How do you think you're going to be able to go forward? Well, we didn't know how we would be able to go forward. In fact, uh, while Archibald Cox was fired, we were not. Uh, because we were Justice Department employees and Nixon didn't have the right to fire us. Uh, but he said that our office was disbanded. The FBI showed up in force, uh, therefore trumping the rule of law with force. We'd never seen anything like this uh, and in this country. Uh, and uh, we never expected to see anything like it again until January 6th. Uh, and, and that was quite extraordinary. So the use of force, instead of allowing a uh, proper appointed special prosecutor to carry out his responsibilities. So the American public, the press, uh, and the Congress, which had uh, been interested to some extent, of course, in the Urban Committee hearings, we're not galvanized by those hearings and still continue to give the benefit of the doubt to the sitting president. Now, with the resignation of uh, two very important law enforcement officers in the country and the firing of an independent special prosecutor, people began to ask quite, quite properly, what was Nixon hiding? And so there was a dramatic shift, in my view, following this Saturday night massacre where people began to suspect there was a whole lot more to the Watergate affair than had been led on. As uh, Bill Cohn said earlier, this uh, White House uh, characterization as a third-rate break-in was in fact a uh, reflexive reaction uh, by the government uh, of uh, Richard Nixon uh, to cover up and to hide not only who was behind Watergate, but a variety of other violations of law serious in nature that even uh, Attorney General uh, John Mitchell characterized as the White House horrors. These included the break-in of Daniel Ellsberg's psychiatrist's office, the pr uh, proposed firebombing of the Brookings Institution, uh, the uh, use of thugs to rough up anti-war demonstrators, uh, the use of the IRS uh, against political enemies of the president, uh, unlawful wiretapping of journalists, and the list went on and on and on with an enemies list compiled uh, by the White House 
to use the power of government against individuals who, whose only offense was to oppose President Nixon politically.